Hi everyone and welcome. In this video I'm going to talk to you about bearings. Now bearings are a pet hate of mine because uh, I ride my bike through winter on the way to work and they tend to grind, click and do all sorts of things. Um, this video will hopefully give you some information about what the different types of bearings are, um, what the numbers mean, what the suffixes mean and how to go about purchasing them. If we take um, just my two bikes as an example, so the Time Machine, BMC Time Machine, this type of cartridge bearing is used in the front wheel hub, the bottom bracket, uh, the rear wheel hub and also in the uh, free hub, so it is quite common. The pedals I've got, which are Durace pedals, don't have cartridge bearings, they use a different type of bearing called a needle roller, but I'll make a different video about that one. A notable exception to this type of cartridge bearing are Shimano wheels. Now my Cervelo bike has um, what I know as cup and cone bearings and it's a sort of a trait for Shimano. So again, that'll come to a different video. So let's first of all talk about standards. Right, so if I talk about standards, there are four standards. Um, there is J JIS, which is Japanese Industrial Standard. DIN, which is Deutsche Institute für Normung, which is a German standard, ISO, which is an international standard, and ABEC, which is from the American Bearing Manufacturers Association. The first three, so JIS, ISO, and DIN, are basically interchangeable. So the only difference in those bearings is the actual number they are given. The dimensional size is the same, but it's just the numbering that they're given that's, uh, that's different. ABEC which is kind of proliferated itself from the skateboard industry is used by um, Enduro. They're the only ones who really use that. Nobody else uses that. So as far as the, um, the standards go, NSK, NTN, anyone who's Japanese uses JIS numbering. The people that use ISO slash DIN numbering are SKF, uh, INA or INA and FAG, part of the Schaeffler group, um, they use ISO or DIN numbering and that's something I'll come on to in a second. So if we talk about bearing numbering, let's pick a popular bearing, so a 6806 bearing. 6806 bearing is commonly used in BB30 and PF30 bottom bracket. Now 6806 its common dimensions or its nominal dimensions are 30 millimeters ID, 42 millimeters OD, and it is seven millimeters thick. Okay. How this relates to the bearing number, I'm going to explain that now. So the first number, which is this six, is the bearing series. Series. So 6 is a deep groove ball bearing, 7 is an angular contact bearing, and there's some other numbers. Realistically speaking, on a bike, the vast majority will start 6. There may be some that start 7, but it's rare. It's usually just on angular contact bearings on bottom brackets. This next number, 8, is the dimension series. Now, the dimension series is basically how big the outside diameter of the bearing so let's pick a bearing that is in relation to the bore size the bigger the number the bigger the outside diameter however the numbering does not start at zero so it starts seven eight nine zero two three and so on so that is the dimension series. So in the case of a 6806, our dimension series will be 8. Then the final two digits determine the bore size. Now, bore sizes start at 0, 0. Well, they actually start in single digits, but for the purposes of this video, we'll start at 0, 0. 0, 0 is 10 millimetres. 0, 1 is 12 millimetres, 0, 2 is 15 millimetres, 0, 3 is 17 millimetres, 0, 4 is 20 millimetres, 0, 5 
25, 0, 06 is 30 millimeters. From this point onwards, it's easy to remember the bore size because all you do is multiply the digits by 5. So 0, 04 times 5 gives me 20 millimeter bore. In the case of our bearing, 0, 06 times 5 gives us 30 millimeters. Okay? The final bit of the bearing number is the suffix that's at the end. So in the case of um, this NTN bearing, the suffix at the end is LLU. And that determines the seal type. Same size bearing, different brand, FAG brand, it's 2RSR. That determines the seal type. And LLU is a contact seal. 2RSR is the same contact seal just a different brand and this is not common across manufacturers so SKF will use some designation, NTN use one designation, NSK another and so forth. The only real way to um, find out what that designation is is to look in a book and if we look in the NTN book flick it over to the seal page and we've got shielded type which is ZZ Really, you only find those in, in pedals. It's the only place I've seen them on a bike. Contact type, LLU. This is very good for uh, wheel bearings because they tend to um, be exposed to dirt and muck. Uh, and the other one is LLB. Now, this is the one to go for if you want out-and-out -out performance. Um, the friction difference is, is massive. Um, you can seriously feel the difference when you have those bearings in. Now I think the most important topic in this whole video is about bearing tolerances because that is uh, a factor that influences power, noise and um, can really irritate people. Bearing tolerances are governed by the class the bearing is made to. So the class classes go class 0 or unclassified or unspecified, then it goes class 6, class 5, class 4, there is no class 3 and then the final one is class 2. So class 2 is the best. The difference uh, between the classes is in terms of the variation on sizes. So if we take the example of this 6806 bearing, the nominal outside diameter is supposed to be 42 millimeters. In reality, um, it could be, if you've got a class unclassified bearing, 42 millimeters as a maximum or 41.988 as a minimum, so anywhere in that range. If you go to the other end of the spectrum and get a class 2 bearing, then again the maximum can be 42 millimeters, but the minimum can only be 41.998. So there is 10 microns of difference, and that does make a significant difference. The other factors are in terms of the smoothness of the running plane inside. So these things, when you look at them, are smooth uh, on the uh, top. Uh, and through the bore, but in reality they look like a mountain range. So again, the finer the tolerance is, or the higher the class grade, class 2, the more flat that becomes. In terms of performance, some other key variables, class 2 bearings have something called, uh, well there's a measurement called run out, which determines how eccentric that movement is. So if you've got a run out of zero, that means it's, it's going in a perfectly circular orbit about the center line. If you've got a uh, run out that is excessive then what happens is the the orbit looks slightly eccentric so instead of it looking like um, like a circle it will look more like an egg shape. Again it's at a microscopic level um, but it, it's there. One final aspect which again is not so much tolerance related but to do with brands is something called the clearance. Now the clearance on most um, you know, commodity item bearings from the likes of SKF, NTN, um, Schaeffler Group is, is class normal. So by that, the outer ring and the inner ring are separated by balls that are in the gap. Now there is a small gap between the balls and the outer race and the inner race and that's called the bearing clearance. Um, on a, on a commodity bearing, so from the big manufacturers, they tend to be C normal, so normal class. On an Enduro bearing, they are always C3, so that gap is bigger 
um, than on the commodity item. What that manifests itself as is these bearings are absolutely notorious for making a clicking uh, noise or feeling uh, after not many kilometres. So I usually avoid these, um, but again, if you want ultimate performance and lowest friction, then ceramic is the way forward. So I guess in, in conclusion of this video, um, you know, some people have asked what kind of bearing would I buy? Well, uh, as a minimum, I would buy a class 5 bearing. Um, I found that those last longer um, and they uh, are, are relatively reasonable in value. I would absolutely steer clear of anything that's unbranded because I've seen the, the tolerances that they're manufactured to and they're just appalling. So I wouldn't go near them at all. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you liked it, please give me a thumbs up and uh, please feel free to subscribe. Um, if you've got any questions, then please use the comments below. Thank you.